<laughs> What's your favorite book and why? Okay, so I don't know my favorite, favorite book, but I did, I am reading a book called Tampa right now, and I read a book, one of my favorite books was um, The Child Called It. Okay. It was so emotional, it really was like graphic, and, and it was deep, and it brought you into a world of a child that had really tough abuse of life, and it was hard to believe, but it was a true story. Yeah. Oh, one other question. Mentor. What should I read? That's what you should be telling me. Since you know. Headed to the World Series. Taking the Challenger jet. I was doing the Rob Report car judging, so I had to take this so we can get there in four and a half hours. Um, in the car, I was listening to some Rihanna songs, and it reminded me of something. Uh, it reminded me of how impressed I was with Rihanna when I met her. One of the impressive things about Rihanna to me was that, you know, she's one of the most popular people in the world. If anybody be, could be cocky, you know, and not be interested in other people, it'd be her. But the first thing, if you see my interview with her, that she said to me, I started out and I said, Rihanna, you know, what's your favorite book? And she started to talk and then she caught herself and said, wait a sec, Ty, you're the book guy. What's your favorite book? And you see, I can't tell you how many people who have accomplished less than Rihanna, okay, are, are so much cockier than her. See, that question is a sign of true humility. When you realize you don't have all the answers and that someone else does, and that you also, in the 67 steps, I talk about how you have to know who's in the room. One of the reasons that people can't find mentors, it's not because mentors don't exist, it's just that I can, uh, nine out of 10 times when somebody's actually around a mentor, they'll kind of act like, yeah, I need your help, I wanna learn from you, but I, I kind of already know what I'm doing. I've seen that so many times and it's annoying to mentors. If one of my mentors has been doing real estate for 40 or 50 years, when I talk to him about real estate, I, I'm like, I know nothing. Even though I do know, but in comparison to him, I haven't even been alive that long. So I give him what's called deference, respect. And so Rihanna, even though she didn't have to, you know, I, I, I know a lot about books. I've been reading and I've got the largest online book club in the world right now. So it's not like she's kissing up to me. It's just she has respect for other people's areas of expertise. And instead of her just talking away, she listens. One of the lessons I learned when I was young, I was with some, about four mentors. They were all together in Mississippi. Alan Nation, Joel Salatin, Dr. Gordon Hazard, the guy named Gary Townsend, and it was, they were having a little private dinner and they invited me. I was only, I was still a teenager. And, and I remember I talked the whole time. And at the end, Alan Nation just pulled me aside and he said, Ty, sometimes you don't have anything to say. And he just kind of laughed and walked off. And I read between the lines, what he was trying to say is, Ty, you're at a table, you were at a table with four people who are 20, 30 years ahead of the success that you have, that you want to get to, why would you talk a lot? Just remember, when you walk into a room and you talk a lot, you walked into the room, let's say with 20 units of knowledge in your head. If you talk the whole time, you walk out of the room with 20 units. So there's no increase in your life. You don't have to increase the value and the understanding that you have. If you walk into the room and don't talk much at all, you have 20 units in your brain, but then you get information, insight from all the other people in the room and you walk out of the room with another 20 units. So now you got 40 units. That's called a win-win situation. And that's what Rihanna did. Even though she could have just sat there and talked the whole time. And of course, it's okay to have back and forth. It doesn't mean you have to be silent but she started out, and what I thought was interesting is that that was her, her gut feeling. That's her impulse of how she acts naturally, which means she's learned in order to become successful, she has to be able to evaluate the expertise of people in the room. 
one of the 67 steps that I teach is something called knowing who's in the room. You can't act the same around everybody. It doesn't mean you have to be disingenuous or not uh, you know, authentic. You don't have to become a different person. But if I walk in the room with the President of the United States, I'm gonna act differently than if I walk in the room you know, with somebody who's an intern for my company. And there's nothing wrong with that. Don't listen to anybody that says, because that's respect for what people have done. You know, and it's okay to respect. And the, and the, and the benefit you get back, not only is it the right social cues for you to give off, but also that's how you keep mentors. Because nobody wants to accomplish a lot and then have somebody disrespect them who's asking them for help. Why would a mentor, if you want a business mentor, let's say they're already made, you know, a millionaire or a billionaire or whatever your criteria is for your mentor, well, they already accomplished it. So they're here in the, they've had the years and the time and the accomplishments there. If you want to learn how to do that, you're back here. And you always want mentors that have a big gap between you. And so when there's that big gap, then what happens is, you can show the respect. They'll then say, well, you know what? Even though I don't need to spend my time, I'm not doing this for money, this person seems like they're genuinely interested, curious, that's what Rihanna was also, curiosity's a factor. And then they'll reciprocate back to you because most mentors realize at some point in their life, they were um, helped by somebody else. So they're open to helping, but nobody wants to help somebody annoying. Joel Stoughton used to tell me, I don't mind carrying a man tie, but I don't want him to drag his feet. Drag his feet means be annoying, be a burden, be quick to say you don't know something. Just like Rihanna was like, hey, you're the book person, Ty. You tell me. So she walked out of that meeting with new insight. I talked about some books and I sent her a present, a book, and so she came with more. Chris Paul's at my house this week for lunch. Same thing. You know, this is a multiple time all star, $100 million NBA basketball contract, head of the Players League, all star. You like the ghost? Me. You had what? You had the Wraith too? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what's better. Hey, Chris Paul here. I just want to wish you the best. I uh, wish you would have been here so I could meet you, man. But, uh,. Best of luck in my prayers. And he was like, Ty, I got some questions for you. And I was blown away once again, like I was with Rihanna, that somebody with that much, uh, that much achievement, that much status is still curious, respectful, and interested in what other people have to say. And that, see, you gotta reverse it. That's the reason they are successful. Rihanna's not that way because now she's successful and turned into that way. She got to that spot. Because remember, Rihanna had key people who believed in her when she was just starting out. She had Jay-Z and, and you know she had all these people that helped her. And so she knew how to deal with people. She knew how to respect people. She knew how to interact in a way that doesn't come off as cocky or too wordy, you know? So just remember that when you're in an environment, when you're around, know who's in the room. If there's somebody who has something to teach you, Ask them, ask more than you've talked. A good ratio, I would say, would be three to one. So you're in a room, you realize you're with somebody, a potential mentor, or somebody you can give insight. For every, Make sure if you say one sentence, you don't talk until they say three sentences. Okay, that's a great way to do it. A uh, good little ratio to keep in mind. What books speak to you the most? What books? What type of books? True, uh, true stories. They have to be true, real life things that have happened or autobiographies. I love those. I only watch documentaries or reality yeah, TV, things like that. <laughs> I'm obsessed with like real things. Contiki, have you ever heard of this book? It was a guy, nobody yeah. believed in him, so he took a boat and he lashed together nine logs and he floated across the Pacific Ocean just to prove it could be done. Really? That's a crazy story of courage. And, and that's a real story? It's a true story. You need to, well, I'm, 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 I'm,